tonight on First at 9, this Wednesday, the 17th of July, 2024. Relief from reforms. New water tariff formula, which will be in effect from next year, will introduce concessions, assures the water supply minister. My team is calculating it as we speak. Within this week, I can give you a range. Security measures. Committee to be appointed to ensure the safety of presidential candidates. Obey Vishwasi Dino Sinsurain, then Lagamati Pharmacy in Labat at Hacker. This is Ada Verna First at Nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of Other There and a First at Nine. I'm Tarindu Mahendra, joining you with the latest in Sri Lanka and around the world. Now, President Ranil Vikramasinghe says that the people's faith in his government during the economic crisis was a decisive factor that aided the government in stabilizing the country's economy. Addressing an event in Colombo, the head of state revealed plans to form villages for the estate community as part of the government's initiative to provide land ownership to the communities across the island. The Rondorurume program for granting freehold deeds for 50,000 low-income homeowners in the Colombo district was held this afternoon at the Sugata Das Indoor Stadium under the patronage of President Ranil Vikramasinghe. All of you will go home with a peaceful mind today as one of your concerns have been addressed. You've been granted the freehold rights of your residences. This government should be grateful to each and every one of you today. We came into power during a crisis period. I do not have to mention the hardships all of us had to undergo during that time period. All of you believe that our government would develop this country's economy. We will make the maximum use of this opportunity given to us to develop this nation. This is not a normal government which was formed by only one political party. We made some significant progress. However, we are yet to develop this country's economy. By the end of this program, more than 2 million people will be granted the ownership of their houses, apartments and even their lands. This is a record number. However, estate communities are yet to receive their land rights. Plans are on the way to create villages for the estate workers. Three leaders contributed towards this initiative of providing land rights to the public. Former Prime Minister General Sir John Kotalawala, former Presidents Ranasinghe Premadasa and Gotabe Rajapaksa continued these initiatives. Crunchy goodness for hunger on the go. Now, Minister of Water Supply and Estate Development Jeevan Thondaman assures that the newly approved water tariff formula will result in a reduction in the water tariff. The minister stated that the formula is scheduled to come into effect in next January but added that the possibility of implementing it sooner should be explored. Meanwhile, commenting on the issues surrounding estate workers' wages, Thondaman revealed that nine regional plantation companies have agreed to pay the new minimum wage and revealed that the government plans to bring the issue to a close following discussions between plantation companies and the Labour Ministry next month. Mr. You spoke about a possible reduction in water tariff. Do you have any idea by how many percentage a range? In the last cabinet, we got approval for the water tariff formula. We have nine variables in the formula. My team is calculating it as we speak. Within this week, I can give you a range. As far as the variables go, some of the primary variables are energy, fuel, interest rates, the dollar rate. All of that has come down. So I can assure you the water tariff will be coming down, but we are just looking at what the range is going to be. So the water price formula will be implemented from January. Is that correct? Correct. But let me reiterate. The water tariff formula will be implemented from January 2025. However, if the formula can show that there will be a reduction, then there's no harm in trying to see if we can implement the formula as soon as we get the calculation. And how do you see this wages issue now? Nine RPCs have agreed to pay and then others? Nine RPCs had agreed to pay last week. This week, the number is far more than nine. We've received a letter from the Planters Association as well, but I don't think we are in agreement with that proposal, but we are up for discussion. And that will take place on the 6th, but that is between the Labour Minister and the plantation companies. And what does that letter says? They have basically offered 1,350 and I believe a wage increase once in three years. But then again, right now, there is a discussion ongoing between the Labour Ministry and the RPCs. And I think once the Labour Minister gets back to us, we'd be able to give our definite answer. Horizon Campus 2024 Intake. Register now.
Meanwhile, Minister of Mass Media, Transport and Highways, Dr. Bandula Gunavardhan says that the restructuring of debt was essential to recommence all the construction projects that were halted during the crisis period. He made these comments while addressing the media during the inauguration ceremony of the Kohuwela flyover. The construction of the flyover commenced in 2021 with a 50 million euro loan provided by the Hungarian government. However, construction activities were initially halted due to the COVID-19 pandemic and later suspended due to the economic crisis. The construction recommenced in March this year and Minister of Transport and Highways Dr. Bandula Gunavaratan assured that the activities would soon be completed. This morning, the flyover was vested with the public under the patronage of Prime Minister Dinesh Gunavardhana. The construction, which is 297 metres in length and 9.4 metres in width, is overarching a four-lane road that connects Nugegora and Kalubovila. Congratulations you know, for the Sri Lankan government. We could hand over you see, this project. Everybody can use you know, now the highway. After restructuring you know, the IMF and the uh, MOU and uh, sign the uh, Paris Club and something, we are starting negotiations with the Sri Lankan government and the Exim Bank. And we would like to continue with Gatambe flyover. So we would like to go in October if the negotiation between the government and the Exim Bank will be successful and opening a loan again. During a meeting with the Hungarian ambassador, I requested that he release funds for this project. He said his government is unable to do so until Sri Lanka explains how the debt will be serviced. What the president meant by the good news is that the debt restructuring should be completed to recommence these projects. If not, we are unable to recommence them. Now, parliamentarian of the Samagi Janabalavege, Dr. Harshadi Silva, claims that the government is yet to conclude the restructuring of foreign debt, adding that it should be concluded in order to avoid any setbacks in the program with the IMF. Addressing a media briefing today, the SJB parliamentarian claimed that President Ranil Vikramasinghe accepted the premiership during the crisis period while talks were ongoing between the SJB and the then president Gautabe Rajapaksa on a transfer of power. IMF, the IMF, the government and the creditors agreed that debt restructuring should continue on par with the IMF program. However, the restructuring of foreign debt is yet to be concluded. Even though the government said that they reached an agreement with the bilateral creditors, it has yet to be signed and tabled in parliament. Following discussions with the international sovereign bond holders, the government presented a cleansing document. There were no signatures on that. Even though the government claimed that the message was good, we have yet to receive the good message with regard to debt restructuring. The government has to conclude debt restructuring tomorrow or the day after. If not, issues pertaining to the agreement with the IMF can arise. It is wrong if someone claims that everything is going well. I refrain from responding to that. However, I would like to respond to the claims that Sajid Premadasa ran away without accepting the premiership. In the evening of the 10th of May 2022, Iran Vikramaratna, Kabir Hashim, Ranjit Madhuma Bandara and I met then President Gotabe Rajapaksha. We held discussions with him on the power transfer. You can ask Gota Rajapaksha. Ranil Vikram Singh accepted the premiership through the back door while those discussions were ongoing. President Ranil Vikram Singh has submitted a cabinet paper proposing the appointment of a committee to conduct threat assessments on presidential candidates and former presidents and to ensure the required security for them. The president's office noted that the decision was taken in view of the forthcoming presidential election and to ensure the safety of the candidates. The topic of the necessity of tightening security for candidates contesting the upcoming elections came into the spotlight following last Saturday's attempt to assassinate former United States President Donald Trump while he was addressing a rally in Pennsylvania. Addressing the media following this incident, parliamentarian of the main opposition, the Samagijana Balavege, Eran Vikram Ratna, who went on to condemn the attack, called for tightened security for opposition leader Sajid Premadasa, noting that similar attacks have occurred against opposition politicians in the past. 
The first news you should have heard this morning must be the story on the assassination attempt on the U.S. presidential candidate, former President Donald Trump, who is also regarded as their opposition leader. He was injured during the incident. I urge the government to prioritize the security of opposition leader Sajid Premadasa and take full responsibility for it. We are a democratic country where politics are conducted through the mandate of the people, not with weapons. Against this backdrop, President Ranil Vikramasinghe submitted a cabinet paper proposing the appointment of a committee to conduct threat assessments on presidential candidates and former presidents and to ensure the required security for them. According to the President's office, the cabinet paper also proposes the appointment of a Deputy Inspector General of Police to oversee these security arrangements. Now, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa says there are parties within Sri Lanka who are prepared to disregard the country's democracy in order to secure personal gains. Addressing an event in Polo Narua, the opposition leader went on to say that the nation's constitution is the supreme law of the land and stressed that no one, regardless of their standing, should be allowed to violate its provisions. The 326th edition of the Sakvela program was held at the Vilayaya Primary School in Aralaganvila in the Polo Narva district under the patronage of opposition leader Sajid Premadasa. <laughs> When executing competitive deals, they should be done in such a way that the country's national interest is prioritized. However, today, these deals are being executed in order to deceive the public. The constitution clearly outlines the time frames within which certain democratic processes must be carried out. However, it is uncertain whether these processes will be executed or not. What is the reason behind this uncertainty? This is because certain parties neglect democracy and the national interest and work towards one's personal interest and well-being. Such people would disregard the nation, democracy and even the constitution for personal gains. I cannot understand why people in a bankrupt country such as this would act in such a manner. The constitution is the supreme law of the country and cannot be violated by anyone. Meanwhile, leader of the Maubi Majanata Party, Dilip Jayavira, says the Sarvajana Balay Alliance's strategic plan is an honest and logical roadmap for developing the country and not a political manifesto. He went on to say that if the other candidates contesting the forthcoming presidential election do not plan on changing their policies, he is confident of securing a decisive victory. Edition of the Sarvajana Sanvade, which introduces the first draft of the Sarvajana Balay Alliance's strategic plan for public discourse, was held in Anuradhapura yesterday. The primary reason for forming the Sarvajana Balay Alliance is because almost all major political camps in the country are acting in the interest of foreign powers. We always represented the nationalist political movement. With the changes occurring in the political landscape, we can see our opportunity is growing. We have introduced our party's strategic plan and would like to have a discussion about it. Our hope is to further develop this strategic plan in the coming weeks. We challenge other parties to present a strategic plan that can rival ours. This is an honest and logical strategic plan, not a policy statement. It encompasses the ideology behind our vision. For instance, we have proposed the Hitehaya program to replace the Samurudhi program. Samurudhi is a charity program. Hitehaya is a comprehensive social welfare initiative that promotes entrepreneurship. It does not simply provide a sum of 2,500 to 5,000 rupees. By uniting during the upcoming presidential election, we can achieve our goals. If other candidates plan on contesting the presidential election without changing their current plans, I feel that this will be an easy victory for me. Star dishwash belly till indul basu in se de. Star dishwash magic topic. Crunchy goodness for hunger on the go. Welcome back. Now, foreign media have reported that a search operation is currently underway to locate 16 missing crew members of a Comoros-flagged oil tanker that capsized off the coast of Oman. The crew of the Prestige Falcon comprised 13 Indian nationals as well as three Sri Lankans. The oil tanker capsized 25 nautical miles 
miles southeast of the Ras Madraka Peninsula last Monday while en route to the port of Aden in Yemen. Foreign reports indicated that the vessel transmitted a distress call at around 3.30 a.m. Sri Lankan time on Sunday. According to officials from Oman's Maritime Security Center, the vessel remains submerged and inverted, but they have not confirmed if it has stabilized. The Oman Maritime Security Center stated that search and rescue missions are ongoing. Media reports have also mentioned that India's Navy has joined the search and rescue operations. Now, Minister of Ports, Shipping and Aviation, Nimal Siripala de Silva, stated that Sri Lanka is prepared to offer its domestic airports and ports to investors looking to initiate industries and projects. He made these remarks during a meeting with a delegation of Japanese investors in Colombo today. A group of 25 leading Japanese investors met with Minister Nimal Siripala de Silva at the Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Aviation today. During the meeting, Japanese investors expressed their interest in introducing Japanese technology for training programs in Sri Lanka's naval and aviation sectors. These proposed investments aim to enhance the technological capabilities of the Sri Lankan youth. Minister Nimal Siripal de Silva emphasized that urgent support is required for the completion of the second terminal of the Katunayaka International Airport. He highlighted that Sri Lanka's domestic airports and ports could serve as locations to launch industries and projects related to the aviation and maritime sectors. Further, he stressed that Sri Lankan youth should be given priority for employment opportunities arising from these investments. The minister also disclosed the government's intention to involve Japanese investors in the future development of the North Colombo port, expressing hope for full support from the Japanese government in these endeavours. The Colombo Bourse closed in red today as a result of price losses in Commercial Bank, Aitken Spence and John Keels Holdings with turnover crossing 1.2 billion rupees. The benchmark All Share Index settled 0.41% lower at 11,830.48 points, while the SNPSL20 edged down by 0.52% to close at 3,456.94 points. Mixed interest was observed in ACL Cables, Joan Keels Hotels, and Primal Glass, whilst retail interest was noted in LOLC Finance, Browns Investments, and LVL Energy Fund. Trading volume on the index, meanwhile, declined to 23 million shares from the 62 million shares during the previous session. The capital goods sector was the top contributor to the market turnover, while the material sector came in second. Foreign investors remained active, closing as net buyers, purchasing over 392 million shares. Up next, we have Minal Vikramage from Capital Alliance with some thoughts on the current status of the economy in our next segment, Economic Outlook. The weekly average weighted prime lending rate for the week ending July 12, 2024 decreased by 19 basis points to 8.85% compared to the previous week. The average weighted call money rate was recorded at 8.73% on July 12, 2024 compared to 8.75% by the end of the previous week. The total outstanding market liquidity was a surplus of 80.39 billion by July 12, 2024 compared to a surplus of 64.97 billion at the end of the previous week. Outstanding central government debt decreased to 27,844 billion by the end of April 2024 from 28,695 billion at the end of 2023. By the end of April 24, total outstanding domestic debt amounted to 17,312 billion, while the rupee value of the total outstanding foreign debt amounted to 10,532 billion. Taking a look at the Treasury bill auction held today, yields fell across the board with the three-month bill settling at 9.55%, the six-month bill settling at 9.78% and the 12-month Treasury bill ending at 10.07%. With that, let's take a look at the rupee exchange rate for the day.
And now let's take a look at the corporate news segment for the day. Windforce PLC and Vidulanka PLC entered into a definitive share sale and purchase agreement with High Energy Services Private Limited, acquiring a substantial equity stake in Solar Energy Private Limited with the aim of strengthening their position in the renewable energy sector. Under the agreement, Windforce PLC and Vidulanka PLC will jointly purchase 36.5 million ordinary voting shares of Solar Universe Private Limited from High Energy Services Private Limited limited for a total consideration of 370 million rupees. In the meantime, each company will invest 185 million rupees, acquiring 18.25 million shares each, aimed at increasing the shareholding of both Windforce and Vidulanka in Solar Universe from 33.3% to 50%. AIA Insurance gained recognition at the recently held 4A's Advertising Awards 2024, securing five awards. AIA's Suavalan was a campaign that emerged as a standout, securing three awards, including two gold awards. The 4As is a non-profit organization committed to advancing the marketing, communications and advertising industry in Sri Lanka with a mission to elevate the industry's stature by nurturing talent, creativity and promoting ethical advertising practices. In other corporate news, Renuka City Hotels PLC announced the resignation of R.S. Tissanayagam from his position as an independent, non-executive director of the company with effect from the 15th of July 2024. As per the corporate disclosure issued by the company, Tissanayagam did not hold any shares of the company at the time of his resignation. And with that, we wrap up tonight's edition of First at Nine. We'll join you tomorrow at the same time. In the meantime, have a pleasant evening.